In this video, we're going to be talking about animations inside of PowerPoint 2016. Now, an animation is very similar to a transition in that it is an effect that plays when a certain event triggers, such as having a slide enter onto the screen. However, animations can play at different timing periods and specifically apply to objects within your slide and not the slide itself. So many of these animation effects are actually going to be what's essentially a transition effect, but only for these objects on the screen. For instance, if we add a fade animation, then whenever this slide loads, this object and only this object is going to start fading in. You can immediately see the difference if I turn that off, go to transitions and then apply the slide transition effect. Now, one thing that animations do allow you to do with your objects on screen is to manipulate their size and direction in different ways than you would have available with a simple slide transition. For instance, if we drop down the list of animations available to us, these motion path transitions allow the object to move in a way that a slide cannot. So we could do a churn here by selecting the churn motion path. And you see when the slide comes in, this object moves along this path to the right and then curves downwards until it reaches its bottom position. However, you can make the churn a different direction as well. If you want it to move down to the right, you can do that as well or have it curve up instead. If you wanted to get more detailed with a motion effect, you could choose edit points. And what edit points will allow you to do is actually tell it exactly what path you want this object to take as it plays its animation. So we could move this point all the way up here and give it a very different curve than just a simple churn to the left or churn to the right. Let's go ahead and preview this in the top left corner. If from the start you already intend to have some wacky custom path, you can of course choose the custom path type where it allows you to just set the exact path by drawing on the screen that this animation is going to take place for. If you'd like precise control over the animation path that it's going to take, you can choose custom path from the list and then start drawing this red line, which will determine the exact path that this animation is actually going to take place on. And when you're done, just double click on the screen and it'll preview it for you. Just like an image, we can actually drag the entire animation over here to the left so that it's a little bit more on screen when we actually play it and then go ahead and preview the animation. Now, any of these selectable PowerPoint objects are available for the animation. So we could take this smart art graphic and actually apply an animation to the entire thing simultaneously. Let's go ahead and try this wheel animation. Just like transitions, you're going to have effect options depending on which animation you're using. So for instance, we can increase the number of spokes from that one clock-like motion to eight where it becomes more like a pinwheel. The advanced animation section allows you to actually add multiple animations to one single object. So for instance, if we want a second animation to appear, we could click add here and maybe just add a motion path line animation. You can see that we actually have two animations that are going to play here by opening up the animation pane and we can see all the animations that apply to this specific object. Because the wheel animation fades an object out, we're going to need to change this to another one. So let's select a non-exit animation. Let's go for a entrance animation such as a wheel. Now if we play the animation from the first one, it's going to play that entrance wheel animation. And then this set of objects is going to move up on the screen. So let's go ahead and play that right now and you'll see what I mean. Ah, it actually moves down, my mistake. Now you're probably wondering if it's possible to change when these animations play. And that's certainly possible. With any animation you apply to an object, you have the ability to choose its triggering event. And this is a major difference between a transition where these animations can play at different times, but a transition can only occur between one slide and moving to the second slide. Now there are two different sets of triggering events you have available here for the animations. The ones that occur at specific points in a bookmark, which would mean a bookmark of a video, as in a specific timing in that video, or a specific timing in an audio clip, or when you click on an object inside of this slide such as the title. 
Now when you do set these triggers, they will only actually take place when you have the slideshow running. So for instance, we can set this to title one. Then when we actually play the slideshow from this current slide and click on the title, that animation is going to take place. However, you do have more triggering options than this trigger section in advanced animation. If you go to the animation pane and click on any of your animations, you can click on the drop down menu to the right of the animation and tell it when it's going to take place. One option is to have it start on clicking the object inside of your PowerPoint presentation. The next one is to have this animation play at the exact same time as the previous animation in this animation pane list. Another one is to start after the previous animation if you want animations to go sequentially. And you also have other options here, such as effect options. With these animation effects, you have the option to smooth out the start, setting a duration for a smooth start. Same with the end. Having a bouncing effect at the end, which we can demonstrate here by putting it at one second. And you see at the end, it did a little bit of a bounce there. You can add sound to the animation. And you can have the object dim to a certain color after the animation is complete. So if we choose orange here, it's going to dim this object to an orange color. On the timing tab, we have the same options to tell it when to start, how much it should delay after that starting event has triggered, how long we want the animation to be, and whether we want it to repeat or not. Specifically for smart art, we're given a smart art animation tab where we can take our smart art graphic and actually have it apply to each of the sub items, such as this picture here, or the text down below, or the title over here, individually rather than everything at once. So for instance, if we choose by level one by one, you'll notice that it changes the animation quite dramatically. Those same timing effects which are available in the effects options dialog are also located up here in this timing section. So you're able to tell each individual animation when it should play, how long it should be, how long you want it to delay when the triggering event occurs. And over here on the right, you can reorder them on the animation panel, which will do the exact same thing as these up and down arrows here. That's more or less everything there is to animations inside of PowerPoint 2016. But you can see that with this many animations available to you and the ability to customize them with triggers and setting start events, animations are actually quite powerful within PowerPoint 2016. So if you want to take any object you have on a slide and animate it at the beginning of the slide or at a different point in the slide, you need only use one of these animation effects. So that's all for animations in PowerPoint 2016. I'll see you in the next video.